Good evening and welcome to Mystery. I'm Vincent Price. Tonight, the final episode of our first series of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. But we promise you that Mystery will bring you a second series soon. You know, there have been a great many parodies written about Sherlock Holmes. Even Conan Doyle wrote two. But he said that his favorite parody of his famous character was written by Sir James M. Barry. Mark Twain's parody is considered one of the worst. Ellery Queen thought Bret Hart's The Stolen Cigar Case the best, and O. Henry wrote about Shamrock Jones. <laughs> T.S. Eliot patterned Macavity, one of his famous cats, on Holmes's arch-villain, Professor Moriarty. Holmes has also lent his image to an unbelievably varied array of products, beginning with a supposed endorsement of Beecham's Pills in 1894. And then there quickly followed Conan Doyle playing cards, uh, which were available with the purchase of turf cigarettes. And a whole slew of music hall songs were written extolling the detective's glories. London Transport, named one of its trains the Sherlock Holmes Special, and the Northumberland Arms Pub was rechristened the Sherlock Holmes. But nothing, as far as I'm concerned, matches the charm of the present-day Baker Street establishment, the uh, My Dear Watson coffee shop. Tonight's story finds Holmes in his Baker Street lodging at Christmas time, but a scandalous theft is about to disturb his solitude, and he begins to unravel the adventure of the Blue Carbuncle. Why all this devotion to a man who was intensely prejudiced, imperious, often bad-tempered, thoughtless with people who, who might look to him for a little kindness? capable of an unmerited snub, grossly self-indulgent, arrogant, self-opinionated, <laughs> and decidedly touchy about trivialities. Well, just because he is Sherlock Holmes, and in our imaginations, we are Sherlock Holmes. And while many of us would tend to envy the inhabitants of the settled and serene Victorian age, Rex Stout suggests that Holmes has fascinated us for the past century because Holmes is the embodiment of man's dearest and most stubborn conceit, that he is a reasoning animal. Stout writes, our, um, our aspiration to put our reason in control of our instincts and emotions is so deep and intense that we constantly pretend we are doing so. We almost never are. But Sherlock Holmes always is. Until next week, then, when we'll begin a new series on mystery, I'm Vincent Price. Good night.